Now, Neanderthals are an interesting uh, concept, an interesting thought. The reason why is because most recently we have discovered new information concerning Neanderthals. Now, one of the things, the old theory about Neanderthals is that they were not as smart as Homo sapiens, and therefore they were either bred out, well, a combination of being bred out by Homo sapiens and or and or killed by homo sapiens but what history and what archaeology is demonstrating to us today is that neanderthals which is a group of humanoids that existed mainly in europe about 150,000 years ago uh, 300 to 150,000 years ago existed in that area they lived alongside at the same time frame of homo erectus and homo sapiens originally they thought that Neanderthals had smaller brains, that they were smaller and thicker, but very, very strong. Uh, more recent information has demonstrated that Neanderthals was definitely stronger than Homo erectus and Homo sapiens, and were, um, but were just as tall, if not taller, as Homo erectus and Homo sapiens. Now, new information has started to show that some of the previous theories were incorrect. One meaning that they thought that Homo sapiens were smarter because of larger brain size. But information is now out that the Neanderthals and the Homo sapiens pretty much had the same size brain. But some of the newest information has demonstrated that the difference between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals is the fact that there seems to be some type of engineered gene splicing in Homo sapiens that creates more neural pathways faster in the Homo sapien than it does for the Neanderthals. Uh, and, one of the, and this may be partially of what explains why about 12,000 to 9,000 years ago, Homo sapiens began to have these great leaps in technology. You see, the Neanderthals and Homo erectus had still been using stone tools and their technology didn't advance that quickly at all. Whereas with Homo sapiens, their technology, their ability to create and utilize other forms of metallurgy began to greatly outpace Homo erectus and Neanderthals. That ingenuity, as we see within history, if you have greater technology, you are e it is easier for you to conquer another group of people. And so the working theory now that is accepted by most archaeologists in that field of study suggests that the Homo sapiens ability to create better tools, better weapons, uh, enabled them to conquer. But also there are some interbreeding, but for the most part, conquered the Neanderthals. And that's why the Neanderthals went extinct and Homo sapiens um, became the dominant um, form of man on the planet. Now to the Sumerians <laughs> and the Anunnaki, because I know people are going to uh, looking for that part. According to the Anunnaki story, the Sumerian story, uh, the Anunnaki were had developed a version of man that would made for a good slave, uh, but that version of man was still lacking, wasn't able to revolt, things of that nature. But about 30,000 years ago, according to their story, Inky genes did some more, some more gene splicing and that artificial part of our brain that seems to connect more, create more neural pathways faster and faster was done to man, was done to Homo sapien. And because of this, Homo sapiens outpaced the Neanderthals. But according to the Sumerian story, the, the Anunnaki are the ones who did the gene therapy on man. Now, after a while, the Anunnaki lost control of man, which is why they allowed for the flooding to destroy man in their story of Gilgamesh. Now, it is believed or thought of by most historians that even the Gilgamesh story is talking about a flood that happened long before the Sumerians and that they're just retelling it. It didn't happen in their time frame because when we look at the Sumerians, we're looking at about 5,000 to 7,000 BCE, 
Whereas when we're looking at the Younger Dryas Flood, that happened around 9,000 to 12,000 BCE. So even for them, they're talking about an ancient story that has been passed down and passed down. But as far as, that was a big bumblebee. Um, but as far as the Neanderthals, they were physically more capable than Homo sapiens, but they were mentally lacking in their ability to engineer and create, and hence that created their destruction. Which the lesson we can learn from that is that if we allow ourselves to not engineer and create, then we will fall victim to those who are able to engineer and create. We can see this in our own history. The Europeans, once their population grew and grew and grew uh, in around the, the late 15th century, they needed to expand. This is why they began to go to India. They began to go to China. They um, needed to trade with other people because the land, the European landscape doesn't grow as much food, doesn't have as many precious metals. But when you're living in the Americas, you're living in the in Africa, you're living in India, you're living in um, Southern Asia, you don't have a need to expand. You don't have a need to conquer. The land is providing enough for all the people. So innovation becomes slowed down. Uh, this is why China with the Mongols and the Hans, they were able to advance just as quickly as the Europeans because their land doesn't produce as much either. And so therefore they had to go out and discover they had to go out and and conquer and meet people and things of that nature so just because you have a good thing doesn't mean you should stay steadfast in your good thing uh, we all have that ability people we see that today in our economies people who are not seeking to advance themselves are the ones who seem to get left behind or get caught with their pants down when an entire industry goes away Imagine if you were taught as a woman to go and be a typist uh, in the 50s. By the time the 70s come around, your industry is gone, you know, or practically gone. And by the time the 80s and 90s come around, your industry is gone. So we have to keep advancing. And this was the difference between the Homo sapien and the Neanderthals. They did not have the mental ability to be able to advance consistently, continuously, like the Homo sapiens. And according to the Sumerians, it was Inky's doing that allowed for us to become what we are today. Because Inky, out of all the other Anunnaki, the royal bloodline, was the only one who cared enough about man to ensure that man would continue to be able to thrive on this planet. Beyond that, I don't know much else about the Neanderthals. Um, there are many speculations about them going into sub-Saharan Africa at some point and um, eating, you know, conquering them by, for food uh, and for mating. But those are just theories. We don't necessarily have um, anything, any hard facts on that one yet. But we do know that Homo sapiens did go up into Europe and began to conquer and conquer the Neanderthals. So we do have information on that. And it is very possible that by following food that the Neanderthals did come into Southern Africa. But this is why it, you'll find more Europeans have Neanderthal uh, genes than any other group of people around the planet. So I hope that answers your question. You have a great day. And remember always, you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey, good vibrations.